this half hour, we are going to be here at Soldiers Field for a special ceremony that happened this morning regarding National Police Week, talking about the 300 officers across the country who died in the last year, honoring those who have died in the line of duty, and speaking with one of our deputies who has a very personal tie to a law enforcement officer who died many years ago. We'll get to all of that in this half hour. But first, let's start with what is happening at the state capitol with that vote in the Minnesota House last night. In a 72 to 61 vote, Minnesota House members voted in favor of legalizing recreational use of marijuana for those 21 and older. It is a historic vote and likely one that is more of a symbolic move since the Republican-controlled Senate is already largely against it. Paul Gazelka saying it will not make it to the floor for a debate. The bill would allow Minnesotans 21 years and older to have up to two ounces of cannabis in public or up to 10 pounds in their home. It also creates an opportunity to use money generated from taking cannabis to use Use it for providing tax relief for lower and middle income taxpayers. Last night's vote is very much going to affect our law enforcement. One of the strongest opponents from our area is Sheriff Kevin Torgerson, who after today's ceremony took time to talk about what today means, what this week means for law enforcement, but also to address that vote. What they're not talking about is the, the real public safety and, and the social impacts of what may happen. I think we're rushing to some judgments, rushing to some decisions, and putting things in place that are really going to hamper how our communities are safe. They're projecting it's going to make it better. Sure, it's going to make it better for some people, but it's going to make it worse for everybody. What about those who would say that this would be better for law enforcement in that you won't be tied up with petty misdemeanor drug related crimes. Yeah. You know the thing thing of it is is those the, the petty things, the little things. We've we've I've said it multiple times, you know, the the issue of, you know, just from one incident we have a traffic stop that was with an expired plate and bad stuff happened, tragedy happened, and it's it's terrible that anything like that had to happen uh, or did happen. But Timothy McVeigh, the bomber from the Oklahoma City bombing who killed thousands or hundreds of people, um, he was stopped by a police officer doing his job with an expired or a, uh, a, a wrong plate on the vehicle. It was, a, it was a license plate, license tab traffic stop that caught Timothy McVeigh. Those little seemingly insignificant crimes, we find children, uh, human trafficking, things like that. There's, there's all kinds of things that happen that start by just a little bit of an intuition from an officer who's seen something before or knows something's not quite right and they take that extra step and they find something worse that's going on and, and saving people and supporting victims that's getting lost in all this and that's, that's really troubling to me and that's the thing you go up to the capitol you testify before lawmakers whether it's a committee or larger group yeah and do you feel that they're really hearing you or Looking back, do you feel you've wasted your time? Um, yes, and yes, and yes, I, I do. And you know, there's just, certainly there's lawmakers that are listening, but it's it's right now. It doesn't seem as though that's the majority up there. What they are listening to is, and I think our broader communities um, agree with us that some of this is going way too fast and is going to hamper our our safety, our public safety, and our communities, and change our communities. Um, but again, it's a loud major minority that is being listened to, and uh, they're in it for other motives. We're in it for keeping people safe, keeping officers safe, and that's our bottom line. It's always been that, but yet it's getting twisted around, and uh, we need more people like you to help us tell that story, and we're not getting those chances, and they're not those those messages that we're trying to share are not being heard. So is a higher elected position possibly in your future? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's right the here, first right time now, I there got asked that. <laughs> Holy cow. I was just wondering if anybody has brought that to you because no. it takes somebody with passion to make yeah. that change. And if you're not being heard as a law enforcement yeah. official, why not a politician? Yeah. Well, 
no, that hadn't been in my cards. And there's another very important person in my life that I would have to consult before anything like that got she decided. She might say no. <laughs> she, she will say no. <laughs> Let me take a break at this point, and when we come back to talk about this ceremony and yeah. the memorial that's going up. You bet. Thank you. My conversation with Sheriff Kevin Torgerson continues as we're talking about what this ceremony for peace officers means to him, as well as the memorial that is being built in Rochester and what that's going to mean for the future. Let's talk about this ceremony. Uh, it, it was not a week's in the planning stages, um, but plenty of people showed up. Yeah. It, makes you feel good when you see that kind of support. It does, it does. How are you feeling these days about support from people? Uh, really, actually, quite good. good. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Um, if I do watch the news um, or I read something or whatever, and, you know, some, you know, the stories that are the negative ones, we hear those a lot. We hear a lot of positive stuff. People have been bringing treats to the office, and, you know, those things have just been wonderful. Um, over the last years and that and, and people see me different places or they see our officers one one of our deputies was uh, had to say no to a gift yesterday and somebody wanted to give him something and uh, sorry we can't take that and try to explain that so the community as a whole I think they see it um, but again it's it's the the uh, minority that has a loud voice that's being heard more and uh, you know we need the these kind of things to happen. This is very spontaneous. We were not doing anything because of COVID yet, and we made that decision a couple of months ago. And could we have, as I'm standing here watching, I was thinking, well, maybe we could have done something. Um, but no, it's we're, we're just not going to. And we it's nice that the community members stepped up though and yeah, said we're going to do it. And it then is. you got it invited is. instead of having to plan. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. That was. Um, then they go, hey, are you going to talk? I'm like, oh, I wasn't planning that part. You got to give me a give little heads up. Give you a microphone though <laughs> and a, a podium to speak. And yeah, I don't I'll take think a chance. A <laughs> I'll take a chance. Just kind of get things lined up inside my head. But the memorial that's getting built yeah, for uh, law enforcement. Where's that standing? And I know that fundraising got put on hold. Yeah, well, well, not necessarily. Yeah, we got hurt a little bit last year because of COVID, like everything did. You know, so I wish we could add more interaction and done some things COVID wise or fundraising wise last year. But you know, that's that's fine. We had some time to we had to work out an agreement to work with the city and Park and Rec to to use the land that they're giving us. So um, we had to, we had some time on that. So. We were always hopeful that this would be our year that we can move and uh, start moving some ground and and. Does it get, look like it's going to happen? It really does. It really does. I, I, I mentioned I was on a phone call with uh, people that are really behind us in, in the construction side of things, and uh, you know we're we're really close uh, to getting the final permit and being able to say we're going to go move some dirt, but the uh, actual you know like everything else construction costs went sky high we had one uh, uh, idea as to how much it was going to cost us last summer and we thought okay we're we're pretty much on track we we could make it we could get there and then uh, earlier this spring uh, and you know basically a month and a half ago uh, we learned that the the granite the, the actual stone that's going to be the memorial has gone way up in price huge and so we are now in a in a rapid <laughs> attempt to find ways to raise some money and uh, we've got a couple things in, in the pipe and hopefully we'll get them out here in the next uh, few weeks to get it going and get it done and maybe this will help yeah maybe it will so yeah, uh, we're looking at businesses. We're looking at banks. We're looking at people that Sponsor. can really make some big, big contributions because we are so close yeah. um, to getting it done. We've it, we've got a couple hundred thousand in in-kind donations. We've got all that covered. It's just we got to get this stone, and that's the last piece that's uh, in 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 play. And um, hopefully, we can make it happen real soon. Exciting. Well, you know, you have my support. Thank and you, know you so I much, Betsy. It. Yeah, thank you very much.